sambung sa inyong tanan. How is everyone? This afternoon? I want to feel the energy because we have a very, very, very special guest who flew in all the way from San Francisco to be with us here in Cebu. How is everyone? That's what I want. I want the energy level through the roof in this particular BBC leadership interview. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Rico Hizon, BBC World News presenter of Newsday and Asia Business Report. And I am proud to be a Filipino. And it is my honor to introduce to you our very special guest for this afternoon for the BBC News leadership interview. Let me tell you some background about this gentleman that is about to go on stage. He's a co-founder of a global online marketplace that just has six million listings of rooms, flats, and houses in around what, 81,000 cities around the world. And guess what? According to Forbes magazine, this company, which is still privately held, is worth 31 billion US dollars. So are we ready to listen to him? I don't think you're ready to listen to him. Are we all ready to listen to this one-on-one -on -one interview? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let us all please welcome his first time in the Philippines and first time in Cebu and first time in the Pata Annual Summit. Let us all please welcome no less than the co-founder, chief strategy officer and chairman of Airbnb China, Nathan Glitchersek. Nathan! How are you, Nathan? Okay. All it's right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm sure a lot of people want to know about Airbnb. Would you want to stand or would you want to have to be seated? I want to stand. Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's move forward here. So at least we can be more engaging you have with so the much audience. Energy. I think we need to stand, yes. <laughs> That's right. So, Nathan, first of all, tell us some background about Airbnb. I did some research. It started all the way back in 2008. And you had two other co-founders. Uh, you have Joe and Chesky. How did it all start? How did you all meet? So about 12 years ago, we were all roommates living in San Francisco. This was well before the company existed. And in the summer of 2007, the rent on our apartment was raised suddenly 25%. And I said, that's too expensive. I'm moving out. But my <laughs> two roommates, uh, they wanted to stay, but they had just quit their jobs to become entrepreneurs, also known as unemployed. <laughs> so they didn't have any money either. And this was, of course, during the financial crisis. Well, this is even before. Even before. Even before. Summer 2007. But they're both designers by background, mm -hmm. and they knew that an international design conference was coming to San Francisco. And they saw that all the hotels in San Francisco were sold out. And so they had an idea. Why not rent out the vacant bedroom in the apartment to designers who might need a place to stay that weekend? Now, the bedroom, my former bedroom, it was empty. I had moved out. There was no bed. But Joe set up an air bed. And instead of calling it a bed and breakfast, he mm -hmm. called it an air bed and breakfast. So Airbnb is short for air bed and breakfast. They put up a blog post uh, on a design blog. And before they knew it, three designers wanted to stay there. They were expecting guys like themselves, 20-year-old male. Instead, they got a 35-year-old woman from Boston, a father of four from Utah, and a man from India. So that kind of broke their assumptions. And the three of them stayed there that weekend. They all went to the conference together. Mm -hmm. Joe and Brian introduced uh, the guests to their social network, their friends, took them out to eat. It was really a great experience for everybody. Joe and Brian made almost $1,000 that weekend. It was $80 a night times three times four nights or so. And so it really was a win-win. And based off that experience, a few months later, the three of us got together in early 2008 and thought, 
Maybe we can do this for other people in other situations. Why don't we try to make it just as easy to book someone's home as a hotel? And so that's what we set out to do. Um, you know, we never made a business plan. Uh, we were simply solving our own problem and got inspired and set out to do this in 2008. Uh, it wasn't easy going at first. It really wasn't until 2009. You mentioned the recession. It really wasn't until early 2009 after the recession had begun that we really started to take off in New York specifically mm -hmm. because in New York, a lot of bankers had lost their jobs and they had nice apartments and suddenly they needed extra income. And so suddenly they were coming to Airbnb and putting their, their stuff on our platform. And uh, well, it's been 11 years since then. And now and the rest is history. Here we are. Yeah, six million listings in over 81,000 cities. But initially, what kinds of challenges did you face? Was it difficult to get funding? It was, it was. I think investors said, um, look, uh, this is not something I would do. Um, it probably isn't a big market. Mm -hmm. And is this even safe? You know, everyone had this question of how do you trust a stranger in your home? And that's the thing that I think a lot of people couldn't get over. And yet we had seen the magic that can happen when people come together uh, and share uh, in, 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 in their home, in their, their network, in their you know, favorite restaurant. Um, and so we were determined. And what we pioneered to overcome this problem was a few things. One was uh, how we handle the money. So on Airbnb, when you book up a home, you pay Airbnb, we hold the money until after you arrive at the place. That way, if something's not as described or you need to cancel, you can just call us and we'll return the money. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the host knows that in order to get paid, they have to do what was promised in, in the profile. Um, Secondly, uh, after each day, the guest reviews the host, the host reviews the guest. And so, uh, you know, a reputation is accumulated. And, and today on Airbnb, there's hundreds of millions of reviews that have been left. Um, and so, you know, these two really straightforward things were actually very new at the time. That really wasn't happening on any other comparable website. And uh, that alignment of incentives, that accountability is what helped us to overcome the trust barrier. Now, since then, we've added a lot to that. We have over 10,000 people who work in customer service. We have a trust and safety team. We have a million dollar guarantee. Uh, so there's a lot of things we've added on top of that um, to help folks uh, should they need it. Um, but that was the innovation that really led to the growth. All right, I'm sure everybody knows, I mean, being a co-founder of Airbnb, what was your very first experience as an Airbnb customer? Well, our very early experiences were being hosts. Uh, you know, we were literally renting out, offering up the, the couch in our living room when we were founding the company. Mm -hmm. So we'd have early customers there. Uh, I went on to also rent out an extra room in my apartment. And today I am still a host. I've had more than 650 guests stay in my home just over the last four years. Um, and so I think having that connection to the product is so important and has uh, led to a lot of inspiration. Oh, that's right. You were mentioning earlier that you have a, uh, a guest house in San Francisco and people who even rent the place don't know that you were the owner of that guest house. Yes, yes. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm rather discreet of the fa fact that I'm the co-founder. And so it, it is a funny surprise when people figure that out. So what would you say would be, I mean, you have millions of rooms uh, around the world. What would be your three best experiences uh, uh, in an Airbnb, room, flat, or home, anywhere, anywhere around the world? Well, I think one of the amazing things is just the diversity of types of accommodations. Mm. Uh, you know, we have some really special properties that you could probably never before have had access to or found. Uh, my personal favorite uh, is this uh, place in Bali. It's, it's part of a, it, it's, I call it a tree house. Um, it's, it's a three-story structure, though, built in a tree in the middle of the jungle all out of bamboo. Um, it's really an architectural marvel. It was made by an artist. And in fact, there's, there's about 18 of these homes in something called the Green Village. Uh, and we have at least five of them on our website. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was truly special. Uh, I, I took my, my wife there for our anniversary a number of years ago. Um, another great one was uh, you know, going to Italy and staying in a castle. Super experience. We have uh, hundreds, if not even thousands of castles. We have boats. Uh, tree houses, again, are very popular. So that's one of the, the really special things about Airbnb, right. the diversity. Super, those were super experiences, Nate, but what about worse experiences, basically to help your service? What, were there any worse or bad experiences that you had? 
I think the most important thing is to just always, you know, read the profile very carefully, read the reviews very carefully, and ask questions. It's, it's, it's really one of our biggest challenges is just uh, setting expectations, you know, because sometimes people come to us expecting the hotel experience, and it's not the hotel experience. Uh, the plus of that is you're getting something very unique, uh, oftentimes very local, oftentimes you're getting a connection with an individual. Um, but, you, you know, you also need to ask questions because it's not a standardized hotel room. It's literally, uh, it could be a triage, it could be a castle, and what are the questions you should ask in that situation? So that's one of the challenges uh, that we've worked to overcome in our product is to set the right expectations as people are booking the rooms. All right, over the past uh, decade, uh, you've made some major acquisitions and key investments. Uh, one of them was uh, my, buying out uh, hoteltonight.com. Being a, the chief strategy officer, uh, why did you make this move? Well, you know, Airbnb has uh, evolved a lot uh, from where we started with literally airbeds to people renting out extra bedrooms to entire homes to boats and tree houses. And now even on our platform, we have boutique hotels. And we have a vision of Airbnb being suitable for everyone. And we know that people have you know, different needs when they're on a business trip. Sometimes they might be looking for luxury. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they might be wanting to save money and, and, and you know, have a castle. Uh, so there's, there's really, we want to have something for everyone. And we think there is a place to work with the traditional hotel industry, boutique hotels. We think that some of those properties are on brand. And we also see a lot of interest um, a lot of learnings being shared where, you know, we've discovered this huge appetite for, you know, differentiated experiences and we see that a lot of uh, hotels are starting to uh, offer that as well. And so uh, we are actually wanting to more proactively uh, work with the, the established industry and by acquiring Hotel Tonight, uh, that gives us a lot of the team uh, and back-end technology to integrate with the systems uh, that the, the hotel industry uh, already uses. And you made a significant uh, investment in uh, India's biggest hotel operator, Oyo. Um, why did you uh, take this initiative to invest in Oyo? Well, I think there's just so much happening in the industry right now. You're just seeing so many new models emerge, and there's basically a new ecosystem emerging. And within that ecosystem, uh, there's going to be alliances. Um, and uh, we think a lot of this inventory does belong on Airbnb. Um, and so we're making uh, a number of strategic investments, uh, OYO being one, uh, but there's been a handful of others as well. I think what you're seeing is um, an interesting trend where uh, you know, hotels are wanting to become uh, more, uh, you know, being able to offer more local experiences. Uh, there was news, I think, last week that Marriott's going to start offering homes. So hotels are kind of moving more in this direction of being become more boutique uh, and offering kind of apartment-like uh, accommodation. On the other hand, uh, you're seeing um, more uh, entrepreneurs taking the apartment model and scaling it up and becoming in some ways a little bit more like a hotel, you know, offering a little greater scale. And so I think all of this is really converging in an interesting way. A lot of new players are emerging as that happens. And um, of course, we want to be a platform that serves them all. So is that basically, you mentioned uh, Marriott getting into this space, a, a threat uh, to Airbnb. There are also other uh, companies uh, such as Domio, that's um, also getting into uh, the um, online marketplace for rooms and uh, for, uh, for flats and houses. Does that threaten the leadership of, uh, of Airbnb in this space? Well, look, it's a really big market and we're a platform upon which many of those companies actually list their inventory, even if they have their own brands and their own websites. Um, and, and I think one of the unique things about what we've achieved to date is our, our global scale, right? It's the fact that uh, over 500, and, and look, I, I think this is all just part of, of the process, is um, you know, figuring these issues out. Uh, I think we've made it very clear uh, about our position of wanting to partner, um, and I think we've seen some great examples, like Japan, for example, where we went through a year ago a period of, you know, it was, it was a tough transition when those new regulations went into place. Um, and, you know, there had some extra steps in there that some people found it hard to, to comply with. And so, a year ago that was tough, but look back a year later, Japan is once again one of our fastest growing countries. 
Uh, there's 40,000 properties in Japan on Airbnb uh, that meet the requirements. And that number is growing very quickly. Uh, and our, our market share leadership uh, is, is still you know, the leading platform. You know, two thirds or more of the properties that have been registered with the authorities are on Airbnb. So you know, this is all, um, I think, part of the expected process when there is a new paradigm. There are some bumps, um, but you know, it's, it's fairly obvious to everyone that you know, home sharing is here to stay, that there's great consumer demand for it. Um, and, and that's why you see you know, the folks like Marriott now saying, yeah, we want to be a part of this too. I'm just curious, um, do you have to be consulted on all these issues when there are regulatory problems that crop up in 81,000 81, cities around the world? <laughs> well, are you, are you, is it, do more they, do than they I call you? I'm having a problem, Nate, here in this city. We need your help. <laughs> Certainly more than I would like, but um, <laughs> look, we have a great team. Um, and, you know, at this point, uh, there is enough examples out there uh, where I'd say overall it, it's going uh, more smoothly. All right. It's an 11-year-old company. Everyone is very excited about Airbnb. What is your strategy for the company over the next five to ten years? Where do you want Airbnb to be over the next decade? So I've already mentioned What's your that? vision? Yeah, I, I mean, I've already mentioned the fact that I, I envision us working, um, you know, with, with all the hospitality providers, um, especially those who want to celebrate, you know, local, authentic, unique uh, accommodation and experiences. Um, beyond that, though, we really see ourselves as a platform for the entire trip. So not just about accommodation, um, but really every aspect of travel, we think there is an opportunity to reinvent and infuse more local, authentic experiences into that, and also bring people into the equation, because that's a big part of what we do. You know, we're empowering local people to participate, and in doing so, you're creating these unique experiences. So a great example of that is what we've done with what we call experiences, right? These are you know, what otherwise might be considered activities, um, but historically, activities would be things like you know, bus tours and kind of large scale walking tours, you know, where you're in a group of 40, 50 people. It's not very personal, it's fairly standardized. Um, our approach to that has been, uh, how can we work with local people to take whatever it is that they are uniquely knowledgeable or passionate about and work with them to package that up into something that they can share uh, with a small group of people. And, um, you know, it's a great way to explore passion, like art or fashion. Uh, or exercise, um, but it's also just an icebreaker for meeting new people, meeting a local person for three hours, as well as a number of other guests uh, from around the world. So this is something we've launched about two years ago. Uh, we have about 30,000 experiences now on Airbnb offered across the uh, around the world in a thousand different uh, cities. Um, so, so that was the next step for us beyond homes, um, but we're going further. As we think about ourselves as a trip for the entire platform, we've recently announced uh, that we're going to do something in the flights space. We haven't been specific about what that is, but we think there is a lot of opportunity to improve that experience um, and make it um, you know, a really joyful experience. Uh, we're not going to start an airline. We're not simply going to be an OTA and sell tickets. Um, but we're Are really you sure? <laughs> One of, you might make an announcement tomorrow that you'll be acquiring an airline. The focus is going to be on uh, improving the experience. Um, uh, so there's that. Um, it's the Airbnb lifestyle. It's across the board. Well, we should talk later on. Maybe you have some ideas for me, too. Um, yeah, we think, look, inspiration uh, is a real opportunity, too, because uh, we have these incredibly unique properties. Um, you know, people are going out exploring, and social media is such a big deal. They want to tell their story. So, you know, we definitely think there's opportunity in terms of top of funnel inspiration and getting people to see that it's not just about Barcelona and Tokyo, but there's all this rest of the world uh, that's really interesting to explore too. So, you know, in short, we think there's a ton more opportunity. We think it's early days uh, for the company. Early um, days? So early early days. days, okay. <laughs> I think the next 10 years will be just as exciting as the last 10 years. 81,000 cities, how many more cities would you like to be in? <laughs> I don't know, how many more are there? I'm not sure. There must be more than 100,000. So, 
Okay, here's the big question. You've had some major IPOs over the past uh, couple of weeks, like Lyft. Uber will be the big one, which is listing uh, in the US uh, tonight. 12 hours. Yeah. In about 12 hours time, you've had Zoom, uh, you have Pinterest, they've been sensational in the stock market. Now the big question is, when will Airbnb list on the US stock exchange? Well, I obviously can't say too much, but what we've <laughs> said before is that, um, you know, we'll be ready uh, this year, but that being said, we've not committed to any timetable. And I would just say about our own unique ex uh, uh, position is that Airbnb has been profitable for the last two years. Uh, there's a very strong Not like other companies, model. they've been burning cash. A little bit different than other companies. And, and so therefore, you know, time is on our side in the sense of uh, we don't need to raise additional capital. Um, and so that gives us a lot of discretion in thinking about uh, IPO timing. Making money for the past two years, so why not just keep it private? Why do you, why still the plan to go public? Well, life's more complicated than that, so. <laughs> Our employees are big shareholders in the company too, right? So every employee of Airbnb is also a shareholder in the company. Uh, and that's a big part of our philosophy is that, um, you know, everybody has, has uh, earned a piece of the company in terms of their contributions. We want people to think like entrepreneurs, like builders and owners. Uh, and so we've, we've given out a lot of shares and, uh, you know, it'll be a very special thing when those employees get some liquidity and see some benefit uh, from being a public company. So Nate, this is your first time in Cebu and your first time in the Philippines. Earlier we heard the uh, uh, tourism secretary saying it's more fun in the Philippines. What has been your impression so far of your short stay here in uh, Cebu? Well, the way we started the day this morning was uh, truly incredible, so uh, I really enjoyed that. Uh, shortly hereafter, later on this afternoon, I'm going to go on an Airbnb experience in Cebu, uh, and uh, that will be my first opportunity to get out and explore a bit, and hopefully see some uh, local spots and, and, and get to know the local host. So I'll be looking forward to that. Um, but yes, Airbnb experiences are, are here uh, in, in the Philippines and, and, and doing well. And you mentioned there are about 60,000 listings here in the Philippines. That's how, right. how important is the Philippines uh, to Airbnb? Very important. So uh, the Philippines is one of our fastest growing destinations I mentioned earlier. Uh, and uh, there's 60,000 properties in the Philippines. To put that in perspective, that's just as many properties as we have in India. So Philippines is, is doing really well considering India, uh, that the Philippines is much smaller than India. Uh, and so we see a lot of potential here. It's uh, obviously a very desirable destination and we're seeing a lot of uh, travelers come from uh, from around Asia. Uh, again, we're doing very well in China, so we're seeing a lot of travelers from China. Um, but even from the U.S., we see a lot of folks going to uh, Manila, for example. All right, uh, you mentioned uh, about China, India, the Philippines. What would be the other big emerging markets here in Asia, Asia Pacific? Well, well China is certainly you know the, the biggest and, and very fast growing. Uh, India also very mm. important. Uh, uh, Vietnam, much smaller, but growing very quickly. Philippines, Malaysia. Uh, look, I, I, it, it, all the emerging markets, frankly, are outperforming um, if you look outside of Airbnb, but also within Airbnb. Uh, so, you know, this is going to be an area of investment uh, for us. And with that, Nate, we would like to welcome you to Cebu and the Philippines. Mabuhay! Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much you. to Nate Blitzersek, the co-founder of Airbnb. Thank you so much for investing your time with us in this BBC leadership interview. I'm Rico Hizon reporting. Thank you very much.